welcome to Movies, Films, and Flicks. I am Mark Hoffmeyer, and joining me is a man that is standing outside of the sunroof of an Audi on a French highway aiming a rocket launcher at a Russian vehicle. It's Norbert Morvan. What's the call out of Boathouse at Hereford? What's the call out of Boathouse at Hereford? <laughs> I just ambushed you into a cup of coffee. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is the last good De Niro movie, ladies and gentlemen. Period. Full stop. Well, it's a waste of coffee, but I get it. <laughs> and also, Norbert, I could watch Sean Bean and De Niro eat sandwiches for hours. There were so many scenes of characters just staring at the camera or twiddling their thumbs. <laughs> I love or it. Or just, just wistfully looking at a newspaper. Just moments of silence. Mm -hmm. That balance the action, the intrigue, the deceit, the twists, you know, so good. And so being, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, no, you got it. Go. I interrupted you. I was going to say, and, and I was going to say, and Bean and De Niro, you know, De Niro just sees Bean, Bean's character as just <laughs> this guy he wants to fit in, you know, so, so what do you use? Oh, so here, here's my plan. Oh. I, I know what I'm doing. I'm a really good mercenary. No, you're not. No, nope. you're not. Nope. De, Niro, De, Niro, De Niro's from the Lower East Side, bruh. We know what time it is. We calling you out on your BS. So just line up on either side of each other and then shoot each other. What's the call out of Boathouse at Anford? Oh, gosh. I'm not going in there. It's... I'm not going in there. You back me up. <laughs> We're getting paid to do it. And I like how Vincent says, well, I'm getting paid to go in there. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. he's like, if you if you... What did, what did De Niro say? There's two rules. If you don't trust something, then you probably shouldn't do it. it That's right. And then the other ones I don't remember. Well, well, the other one was also, yeah, I yeah, I want to save my skin. It covers my body. <laughs> oh, man. And also, so I was watching the car chase, and Megan was, was coming in, and she just started watching the car chase and sat down. <laughs> the ending one just went, whoa. It's unbelievable. Yeah. It's unbelievable. I watched there's the... no... Oh, sorry. Oh, I was going to say, I was going to say, there's, there's no CGI. Mm-mm. There is no uh, incredible physics where the runway is actually 24 miles long while you're chasing the airplane. So how long is it? It's, it's real time stunt work. It's amazing. Oh, and the, the stunt car stunt court coordinator, uh, Jean-Claude Lanier, he was a former Formula One driver. Lanier, I'm sorry if I'm butchering that name. My apologies. But he's a real <laughs> F1 driver. And they originally had a stunt crew for this movie. They fired him a few days before they started. Frankenheimer called Jean Claude and was like, "Hey, can you work for me?" He's like, "Hell yeah!" Because he loved Le Mans and this mm -hmm. amazing driver who had been a driver for Roger Moore twice before, just a bit on the Bond movies. Huge guy yeah. came out and did this. And just watching this, right? They during the scene where they're going through oncoming traffic, they were going seventy-five, and those cars were going thirty-five, and they had professional drivers in all of them. And it's just. They had to hold their line, Norbert. They, they, yeah. they like hold steady. These guys, it's a marvel. I've actually, so when I started working in the Atlanta film industry, I, I became a guy who, who got known to work cars. So I worked mm -hmm. a lot of movies where you get people in cars and you get them driving. In Atlanta, we had what you call precision drivers. They had to take mm -hmm. a, like a weekend course on how to do good driving. And then you get the certificate and you can get better jobs on film sets. These yeah. were not precision drivers. These were race car drivers in every single one of these vehicles flying at each other in Paris on a Sunday. They only had the road for five hours, be and, which is insane because, you know, in this movie, Frankenheimer, they loved him so much that the police chief of Paris was just, just said, do whatever you want. And normally they don't <laughs> allow people to shoot guns, like fake squib guns on streets. Right. And they all said, do right. what you want. Because you got right. De Niro, you got, you got Jean Renault, who was really big at the time. So you yeah. have... Like they, France just loosened every single restriction they had to these guys. And they had some cracking car chases, just beautiful car chases. And this is one random thing. I I don't know. I, I don't think I've ever told you this, Norbert, but Sean Bean, okay. right? Patriot yeah. Games. For some reason, yes. Patriot Games was a big movie of mine as a kid. Just watching <laughs> that, I loved it. Then I loved GoldenEye. I thought, I like 006 more than I like 007. He was calling For Bond. James. Yeah, absolutely. He was calling Bond on his crap, and I thought he was mm -hmm. like this really cool, like physical villain. And then he mm -hmm. went and did Ronin, and that scene with the coffee cup has always shook me. It was just this guy who was in over his head, out of his league, yep. full of bluster, yep. 
I love yep. that. And then he did Fellowship of the Ring when I was working in a movie theater. And I would close the theater, so I had to stay late, which means I had to watch the last hour of Fellowship Ring for about six months, which is great. <laughs> it is. But this, I don't know. I've uh, Sean, Sean Bean, I'm just so glad we're talking about this because I've just watched those four movies were some of the most I watched in that time period. And I don't know what it is. What? Okay, uh, answer me this, Norbert. What is it about uh, Sam, Robert De Niro's Shakedown that is just so cool of Spence. Like what, what is it about that? That makes it such it's a be, neat scene. It's because Spence is the guy where you go out to a bar, you know, you've got a group of friends and you're all going out to the bar and then you all might talk about, you know, ex girlfriends or ex relationships or something like that. And Spence is just the guy who's clearly lying about everything <laughs> that he's ever done with a woman about every way he's ever picked somebody up, quote unquote, you know, Spence is talking about the incredible one night stand, the three way that he had with two girls that day on spring break. And everybody's just giving him the side eye. Like, we don't believe you. You need more people, Spence. And this is this is why it works so well, because he almost gets them murdered mm -hmm. by going into an enclosed space with plenty of dark corners to hide. Oh, by the way, and it's a perfect place to just be sniped from 47 different directions. And yet, oh, I was in the Royal Marines. No, you, dude, really? Really? How, just, no. And ironically, this is the one movie where Sean Bean doesn't die, and yet he's the least Sean Bean character ever. The, I mean, the least yeah. competent Sean Bean character ever. <laughs> when Deirdre says, I hired a bunch of lames <clears throat> in her, mm -hmm. in her uh, Northern Irish accent, yeah. she was talking about yeah. him, nobody else. The other guys were good. Yeah. The other guys were on it, man. You know, Larry was the Fast and oh, the Furious before Larry's it even happened, you know? I love Larry. Larry's, you know, La Larry just looks like, you know, he eats roast beef sandwich. And when the mayonnaise falls on his pants, he doesn't even stop to wipe it off. He just takes another bite, man. That's oh, Larry. Oh, I love he's it. Just a, he's just, he, he does yeoman's work. Yeah, I need nitrous. And it's got to be custom made, you mm -hmm. know? He needs too fast, too Larry, baby. <laughs> and when they ask him, did you get cars? How will they work? They'll work fine. Yeah. <laughs> I need I need something with a little push, you know. Uh, and it's not going to do it. When he gets his throat slit, I don't know why he doesn't just get shot. Because, I mean, that's a brutal throat slit that he gets dropped on him <laughs> by Seamus. I mean, Seamus is a he, Seamus is a cockroach in this movie, man. Seamus Seamus is one of the worst human beings ever. <laughs> it's like, oh, Deirdre, I gave you a job. Why didn't you do it, Deirdre? Oh, Larry, is it? <laughs> oh yeah and she says why'd you have to kill larry oh it's, it's my favorite line in the whole movie why'd you have to kill larry oh larry is it <laughs> <laughs> i love the accents and he's just such a jerk oh we'll get the kiss won't we won't we gregor we'll get the kiss <laughs> and i love that the villains in this movie they get away by throwing innocent people in front of other people oh, it's yeah. just there are it, 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 it's so honestly, Norbert, it's I don't know why honestly, but it's very refreshing <laughs> to watch as they have Stellan Skarsgård after Stellan. OK, the plot of Ronin is a bunch of freelance mercenaries are hired to steal a case. Things go yep. wrong and then things go wrong again. There's some beautiful yep. car chases and then it ends with Jean Renault and De Niro having a coffee that I never wanted to end because I love watching them drink coffee. And then supposedly just, De Niro goes really, back to the CIA. Right. Right. Twist. Twist. And so, but there's moments in this movie that I just love. It's just watching the Stellan Skarsgård throw those people and go, oh, he's going to kill me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to understand that if you're a mercenary, okay, you've already killed people you don't know for gobs of money. Whatever part of you that used to look at a sunset and think this is beautiful, that kid is dead. Mm -hmm. You know? You have no more innocence. You don't look at snowflakes and try to compare them anymore. You're not the person who dips his toes into the lake just to feel the rushing water. No, man. You're a murderer. You're you are murderer. not looking at plastic bags and finding beauty in them. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so Gregor meets the guy in the car and just takes oh, him to a playground. Oh, I love that scene. Oh! And, and just takes him to a playground and pulls out the most... <laughs> Decepticon looking gun with a uh, with a with a silencer on it and really takes the time to line up what has to be what an eight year old girl yep. climbing climbing on playground equipment 
And and the, even even the evil friend in the car is like, Jesus Christ, Gregor, what are you doing here, man? Yeah. And then Gregor Gregor just I was willing to splatter her brains all over the playground, and I don't even know her. <laughs> I don't like you. Imagine what I would do to you. It's just like, I believe you. He's just a sociopath. And he 100%. kills him with the best trick ever. Hey, it's in the back. And then he hits the gas and then just plop. Oh, yeah. Yo, man. Like he said, man, the reflexes, they die hard. Oh, I love it. It catches the coffee cup. Mm -hmm. There was a behind mm -hmm. the scenes video where Stellan Skarsgård is talking about this. And also Frankenheimer and Rennie Harlan. They didn't give him much to do in 98, 99 in these movies. But each yeah. Rennie, Rennie Harlan and Deep Blue Sea and Frankenheimer and Ronan, they just said, he takes two words and makes an entire fleshed out amazing character with it and cares so much. And 100%. He, Skarsgård played this on a behind the scenes video. I was watching it, it's on YouTube, you can check it out. But he says, I imagine I was a guy who had a family, but I worked too much and then they all left me. And then I became suicidal. And then I just started becoming freelance and I kill people. I don't really care about living or killing. So he's just lost every, yeah, he looks at sunsets and he's like, I hate you. Like he probably shoots a bullet at the sun. <laughs> Magic Hour, more like I don't care. So it's, uh, I, don't know, I dig it. It's such a neat, no, no. neat it's aspect of the character. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. He absolutely has a basement with a freezer full of squirrel meat <laughs> and just animal pelts. You know and that scene where Sam tackles Gregor when De Niro tackles tackles Skarsgård over the rails. That yes. wasn't. Did you know that wasn't supposed to happen? And the stuntman really? just got a little too vigorous. <laughs> they both flipped <laughs> over the metal railings. And Frankenheim was like, yeah, let's let's keep that. Keep that let's in. Keep that. And that keep, scene, keep oh, man. And that scene where they drove into the cafe where they hit people, they did yeah. that. So the, the cool stunt coordinator is just sitting there going, yeah, so we're going to drive them in there. We just got to make sure that people's feet aren't on the ground. Joe Dunn said this. He's like, yeah, they mm -hmm. should, it can't be static. So when the cars come in, all, if you watch it again, all the stunt people jump. So that if they really get whapped by a car... They're not static on the ground. Oh, so, so they're hitting people with cars. They're flipping over things. Oh, that scene where her uh, uh, the final chase where the car flips mm -hmm. uh, and then goes off into the construction site. Yeah, the car amazing. flipped, but then it rolled and it went back on its wheels and it wasn't supposed to. So then they oh, were thinking wow. about maybe doing that again. They're like, well, maybe we should reflip it. And Franklin Hammer's like, nah, I can do that in the edit. And that reminded me of this time I was on a movie. I guess I don't want to say the name. I was working on a movie. And mm -hmm. I did the second unit of it. So we did all the stunts. And there was a scene where this bus is supposed to flip. This is crazy. So, okay. <laughs> so we get this massive wedge, Norbert. We're talking a welded school bus is going to hit this wedge and flip. It is a metal what? wedge that just looks it's triangular shaped, maybe like a 45 degree angle, I would say. Maybe, yeah, maybe mm -hmm. like 45 degrees, maybe a little less. And the bus is supposed to hit it on one side, then flip. <laughs> And this bus is flying down the highway. It hits the ramp, but the guy misjudged it and hit it in the middle. And this bus comes careening towards our set of trucks. <laughs> oh and we had everybody backed up. Like, they were way back. But then the guy yeah. had the wherewithal to just drive it into a ditch. And so he mm. destroyed a bus. And so we had to come back the next night with another bus to flip it. Mm -hmm. But, I don't know, wow. that just reminded me of the gag from Ronin, where the driver was too good and it went back. So the car flipped, went back on its tires, and the guy just drove it back. It's, it's insane. Yeah, the drivers that they had in this. They had Formula One drivers. They had Le Mans drivers. They just had the most nutty crew. Like When they blew up that car, there was a guy in that car. No, with, with the rocket launcher. There was a guy in that car, and he hit the button to flip it. That's insane, dude. Wow. I guess that old Lee Majors show, The Fall Guy, you know, where he was a stuntman mm -hmm. who would also fight crime as a side gig to make up money that he wasn't getting as a stuntman. I guess that was accurate because he would do crazy stuff like that too, man. Oh, man. Sit in the car while it's blowing up. Why not? I'm a stuntman. I'm the fall guy. Weeknights at eight. And you know what's funny? About a month ago when you pitched this movie, you said it'll yeah. just be you and I talking about how they don't make them anymore. But they don't make <laughs> movies like this anymore. Uh, but I shit you not, Norbert. I just sat there going, they don't do this anymore. I None saying. of it. They really don't. And I don't want to be that old fogey, right? But I, I just kept saying it. And every time I said it, I laughed because I remember you saying that.